Hey there folks, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're doing well. Today's video is going to be a relatively quick one. I'm taking a hands-on look at the Nikon 300mm f4 phase, 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 Fresnel lens. So Nikon's got two phase Fresnel lenses in their lineup, and that's their F-mount lineup to be specific. Now that we've certainly entered well into the mirrorless realm and the Z-mount, Z-mount lenses too, uh, but Nikon's got two, and only two right now, phase Fresnel lenses. So I believe the Nikon 300mm F4 phase Fresnel lens came out way, way back in 2015. If I'm not mistaken, I'll have to double check that. So I figured I'd take a look at the lens hands-on for you, just show it to you and give you an idea of what it might be like for you, whether it might be worth your money. Are you gonna really save that much size and weight compared to some other lenses? And how does it mount up perhaps to one of the camera bodies that I suspect you're probably gonna be using to check it out? Does it work well with teleconverters? This isn't a full review, but I just want to give you a sense of how that lens mounts up and what's it like. Let's take a look. How about that? <laughs> look at that. I know I've been checking out the, uh, the 500 mil lens. I was definitely impressed with its size and how tiny it was too, but the 300 takes that to a whole other level. You know, again, there's lots of ways perhaps in Nikon's lineup to reach 300 mils. Um, but for a prime, for an F4, and it takes, again, your 77 millimeter filter thread out front. So a lot of the filters you probably already have can just be um, used as well. If you've got an ND filter, circular polarizer filter, all that stuff, you can throw it on there. And just like, are you kidding me? Look how small this is. It's really tiny, it's really light, and yet it's still, um, if you're used to Nikon lenses, you kind of know they have two tiers and this is their gold ring in the F-mount world, kind of what they're using to designate their professional lenses. And certainly it's got a professional build quality. It has, while it's still incredibly light, it does have a good decent heft to it. So it's not uh, cheap or plasticky or rattly. Again, that 77 millimeter front element. Why don't we throw the lens hood on there too for you? So there we are, there it is with the lens hood on up front. Still remarkably tiny, remarkably light still. And why don't we try another little magic trick here for you. What's that like on perhaps the Nikon D500, which is what I would recommend to shoot this lens with. Let's check that out. And there we are, mounted to the Nikon D500 now. That's the body that I would definitely recommend for shooting this lens with for a number of reasons. Already the D500 is an incredible sports and wildlife body because it's got that uh, amazing 10 frames per second mechanical shutter speed as its maximum uh, shutter speed. That's great for capturing, you know, fleeting moments and all that. It's also got basically the autofocus capabilities of the Nikon D5, their flagship uh, body, just without that vertical grip and without those extra, um, the battery grip and all those extra functions with shooting vertically there. So, that D500 is what I would always recommend for sports and wildlife, which is certainly what this lens uh, appeals to, that sort of shooter. But the thing that takes that over the top then is you basically have a 1.5x teleconverter built into your camera, thanks to that 1.5 times crop factor of the Nikon DX sensor. So the crop sensor has its advantages, that's for sure. So you play those advantages of the D500, play those advantages into the 300 mm F4, Four, and what have you got? You've got a 450 millimeter equivalent F4. And just think about that for a second. That 300 mil F4 is not dirt cheap. In Canada here anyways, it's about $2,500. It's an investment. It's not a beginner lens, it's a pro lens. It's got that gold ring on it. So Nikon tells you it's a pro lens. Um, anyways. What would you have to spend to get 500 mils F4? Just that little, tiny, little bit more reach. In Nikon's world, that's the super telephoto, traditional, for, for whether you're shooting Nikon or Canon, uh, traditional super telephoto, it's a massive, massive lens at F4, uh, 500. And in Canadian dollars, you're typically having to spend about 13, 12, 13 thousand dollars. So you're looking at about five or six times the expense of this lens and I uh, have to double check the weight numbers, but I would not be surprised if that's at least five or six times the weight too. 
So this makes for a combination that's super easy to handhold, super easy to shoot. Use your Joe McNally trademarked DeGrip to get your elbows in there. Don't be shooting with your elbows out. Keep them close to your body. Use your body as a tripod. Use your body as a monopod to support your camera. With a 500mm f4, you're not shooting that without a tripod. You're not shooting that without a monopod, wherever you're going, I guarantee it. I'm not going to get much uh, still images that way. With this combination, get that grip going and yeah, let it rip with the D500, 10 frames per second there. It's a great combination to be shooting with. And then this combination, if you've got a teleconverter, it's got another trick up its sleeve then too, because you've got that 1.5x built into the body. And let's throw a 1.4x on there, why don't we? And boom, there we are with the 1.4x teleconverter. And you can see that does not add much size, length or weight to that overall combination. In fact, it looks basically the same, it handholds basically the same. You're able to shoot that lens in the same way you would. And what have you got? Let's do some quick math. 1.5x times the 300 gives you 450 times 1.4 and I may or may not have cheated ahead of time, but that gives you 630 millimeters. Again, with the teleconverter, you're gonna lose a stop, so you're down to f5.6. 630 millimeters, f5.6. This combination is remarkable, again. Just the amount of reach you're getting there, there's not a lot of other ways in the Nikon world or uh, from any manufacturer where you're getting that kind of reach with that kind of uh, maximum aperture at f5.6, your autofocus is still gonna work great. Um, I'm thinking about for comparables here. Here's a little size comparison for you. I've got the Nikon 70 to 200 f2.8 E. That's a, a really super nice lens too. It's a different focal length. We're not really making that comparison here, but just look at this size comparison. How about that? You've got 630 millimeters of reach here with this combination and you're actually still tinier than a 7200 zoom. Yeah, so Nikon Canada was kind enough to loan this one to me for a couple of weeks here, and I've already had it out in the field, testing it out. I'll hopefully uh, just pop up a couple of images for you guys to check out, and you'll see that even with those tiniest critters, little chickadees, little squirrels, whatever, tiny birds, you're getting right in there, right in their face, and the image quality too. This is not a complete thorough you know, test or review of this lens, but, my initial impressions are that the image quality is remarkable. Um, I'm going to say that this is on par sharpness wise with my 70 to 200, which is a you know stellar professional lens. It's really incredible. Better sharpness overall, definitely I'd say that my uh, compared to my 200 to 500 millimeter. So for that reach, for that size, if I'm okay with the prime versus a zoom that the 200 to 500 is, this would be my lens that I would choose, uh, you know, nine times out of 10, definitely this would be the one. So I hope you liked that look at the Nikon 300mm PF lens. If you did, click subscribe, click like, click the bell, tap all those things and push the buttons that are there. That would be awesome. I've got some big things planned for the channel for 2020 and beyond. More gear and equipment reviews and previews just like this interviews and conversations with leading photographers from around the world as part of my Shutter Muse conversation series. And I'm gonna have uh, tips, tricks, and tutorials that I've picked up along the way in my 10 year plus yeah, journey in photography. <laughs> and you get a chance to look over my shoulder as I undertake a series of assignments and adventures from here on the Canadian prairies in Battleford, Saskatchewan. So that's it for today. Take care. Well, hopefully we'll see you next time. Have a good one.